subscribe, comment. I'm just happy to have you here. So, um, I'm just having some coffee because coffee, it's good. What I want to talk about today is I've been thinking a lot about sugar and cravings and deprivation my new commitment, let's call it, uh, experiment, maybe is a better word. I have decided I'm cutting out sugar. I'm not doing it in a, in a harsh way. For instance, if there's like, if there's sugar in oat milk, I'm going to let myself have the sugar. If there's sugar in like a gummy vitamin, I'm gonna let myself have the gummy vitamin. I'm gonna have fruit. I'm gonna have, I don't know. I'm just gonna eat foods and I'm not gonna be like reading labels. I'm not gonna be doing that thing. Maybe that'll be a next level. But for now, I'm just cutting out sweets. And the reason I'm doing this is I have noticed that especially it hits around night, there's like this kind of, it's a craving. And I want to explore what the hell a craving is. It's a craving like, mm, I want like a little something. Like, okay, now where's my treat? Maybe this is just from childhood when they're like, you get your dessert after you after you eat your vegetables, you know, and then you come to expect the rewards in life. You're like, okay, okay, I've had my day. Now where's my sweet thing? And I'm all for sweet things. All right, I'm all for sweet things. But what exactly is a sweet thing? So like a piece of cake, I do like cake actually. I used to not be a cake person. Now I'm like, mm, cake is pretty all right. But a piece of cake, what I, what I started noticing when I'm actually, and I've noticed this for a while, but like you can kind of ignore it. You can like sweep it away because you're like, stop messing with my enjoyment of this thing. And the thing is, and everyone kind of knows this, you have like a craving and then you're like, oh, cake, yes, cake. And you go and you get yourself a piece of cake. And, and like the first bite is so, so good. And then the second bite is like, okay. And then, and then it's kind of catching up with you. At least this is what happens for me. It's kind of catching up with you. The realization that this isn't hitting the right spot. And, and for me, at least I tend to just cut, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to realize that. So I don't like Put the cake down even though it stopped tasting good. I just kind of like <laughs> this makes it sound really weird. But anyway, um, I've been thinking a lot about that and and what the hell a craving is. Uh, and basically a craving is just a thought. Like for whatever reason you get it into your head that like right the thing right now is cake. The thing that I want is cake. But whether that's what, I mean, so the, the wanting is a thought. That's all it is. Uh, you are thinking, I want cake. That's really all that's been going on. And it's not that like you don't not want it. It's just like, so what? <laughs> So what if you thought you wanted cake? Um, and in the long run, having a piece of cake is, is not going to be good for you. And, and that's the kind of weird uh, backwardsness of, of, um, of cravings, of wanting, of satisfaction. 
is it's almost like we have we have all these like wires crossed as to what's actually good for us. So for me, I've had a lot of fear around deprivation, specifically around my own proclivity to deprive myself. There's been like a lot of guilt and shame that I am extremely hard on myself and I don't, and uh, left to my own devices, I will in some way deprive, punish, destroy myself. So I have a lot of fear around that. And so I will, if we're staying with this cake analogy, I will give myself a piece of cake because I'll be like, see, see, I'm not mean. I'm not mean. I'm, I'm basically just like really afraid that I'm really mean to myself and that I end up um, like killing myself in some way, killing myself off, you know? Like I would vote myself off the island first, probably, if left to my own devices. At least that's what I'm thinking. And, um, you know, I might have it all mixed around and backwards. And I might actually have some really good practices and some really good instincts and some really, I might actually be able to take care of myself pretty well, more than I give myself, um, uh, more than I give my, what's the word? Uh, credit. <laughs> that's the word credit <laughs> yeah I probably don't give myself enough credit for how well I do take care of myself and and it's not a form of like self-punishment or uh harshness you know maybe these are things that actually feed me so to speak and uh and I could be proud of them as opposed to ashamed of them. And so when it comes to cutting out sugar, you know, like just the most basic thing is if you eat sugar, chances are you notice that you're hungry right afterward. So there's a question about, are you actually eating food? Like, are you actually doing anything or are you just kind of introducing a drug into your body that runs through and gives you a kind of like, and then, and then it passes through? And if that's what you're doing, fine, but that's not a substitute for food. So don't trick yourself into thinking that you're eating, really. And, and if we talked about sugar in that way too, it would be very, very different. If we, if we didn't like, I don't know, if, if like sugar wasn't in a grocery store and was at a pharmacy, how would that change things? And that's not like, that's not that bad a comparison thinking of sugar as a, it is a drug i mean a lot of things are drug coffee is a drug but sugar is a drug and it's not it's not something that you build your body on so i'm much better off i'm actually being kinder to myself and i am i'm being more generous to myself if i do not eat sugar and instead i eat whole foods and something that will actually give back to me as opposed to harming me in the long run. And I know this can be really hard for people because, because it's just part of your life. And you're like, I don't wanna give up. I don't wanna give up my delicious, delicious food. That's the only thing that makes life worth living. But yeah, that I, I don't want you to not to give up something that makes life worth living. <laughs> Please don't give that up. But so much of taste and so much of like our senses are associative. Like I've been reading recently about how basically we're all synesthetes. For those of you who don't know, synesthesia is, is when um, two or more senses are combined. So I had a friend in school who had this and to her names, tasted like something. So I feel like I was sharp cheddar to her and, and other people would be like applesauce or, or I don't know, like chicken wings. Like that's how her brain worked. And she had just always had this. And then, and then 
I happened to be watching some random documentary and I was like, you have synesthesia. And she's like, well, oh, I didn't even know there was a name for this. Anyway, I've been reading about how actually all human beings are synesthetes. And it's just that we get trained out of it and we like, we isolate our senses, even though it's kind of there. And, and an obvious point, uh, an obvious thing to point that to is like, I think this is true across the board. It's probably more true for some people than others. But if food looks good, it tastes better. And so that's and probably true of like if it smells good, it tastes better. Those are very closely linked. But that's just an example about how um, when more than one sense is activated, it, it increases the experience of it. And that also goes for memories and learning. It's been proven that the more senses that you can engage in an experience, the more it will stay with you. That just shows how associative we are with pretty much everything that we take in. You have an association in your brain of like Cheetos and love <laughs> and comfort and relaxation or whatever the hell it is. And maybe it's worth looking into that. Like, what is it that you think this gives you? And then to really take that as like, that's a thought. Like you are pairing those things and you can just as easily pair something else. And, and the more you pair that, like the stronger those ties will be. And there's lots of different ways probably to do that. Um, there's probably like people who have done this and I'm just hypothesizing about this right now from my own head. But uh, for instance, if you're like trying to eat healthier and you're like, okay, I'm going to eat a salad or it could be something like non-food related. You're like, okay, I want to learn how to play guitar. But, but for whatever reason, you you tried learning as a kid and you hated your teacher and practicing to you is like about struggle and pain um, and not being good enough, then there's probably like ways to so to like pair guitar playing with something else. So maybe you like, you practice guitar outside or you, you like start, uh, thinking about guitar in a different way, like you imagine playing guitar for your girlfriend or something. And so whenever you're playing guitar, you're like thinking about your girlfriend and how you're going to play for her. And then you do start playing for her. And like, and suddenly those bonds get tied up with the guitar as opposed to that music teacher you really hated as a kid or anyway. So yeah, those are just, those are things I'm taking on. Maybe you guys have experienced this already and maybe like you've already been able to um, make some changes and I'd love to hear about them. Make th maybe you've been able to like make some changes in your own life through this. Uh, and, and if any of you are like inspired and want to join me in some kind of uh, in some kind of challenge and like take on cutting out sugar or a new practice, I'd really love to hear about it. And yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, I love you. Please take care of yourselves. It seems like the world's opening up again. So get out there. Get out there already. Get, get outside, okay? And uh, I'll see ya. Bye.